Hey there. Welcome to another episode of Code Hour. This is going to be a super fast one. I'm going to show a little bit of link optimization work that I was doing this week, and I'm going to jump right into it. So here I have a method. I've got this open in the link pad, and this looks a little bit like something I did this week. So I needed a query, which is querying users. So this looked like this, which happens to be hitting an ASP.NET boilerplate back end, but it doesn't really matter. Just imagine I'm querying something here. And I need to pass in uh, a filter. And this filter is provided by the front end, and it, it's used across the site. So I need to be able to reuse it on multiple parts of the site. This is a sort of a generic concept, and so this needs to be generically reusable. So initial version of this query says I want the creation time to be greater than the start date. I want the creation time to be less than the start time. And then also it does something specific just to this method, which in this case is saying starts with this name. So in this case, uh, I, you know, this, this particular user up here, this instance of this query is saying I want all users whose name starts with Lee, and then I want them to be, uh, their created date to be within this range. So if I run this now, it returns some stuff, and more importantly, it runs some SQL. Now because this is running ASP.NET boilerplate, and I'm hitting not against the database directly, but I'm hitting against my DLLs and my actual data context, which I hope to show another code hour on how to set that up correctly. Regardless, so oh, well, so that's why it's doing the checking the deleted because there's a filter on there and there's a tenant filter on there, or whatever. But the thing we care about here is that it's setting the creation time in the SQL needs to be greater than the filter start date, which is exactly what we asked for, and the name needs to start with basically. So it turned all of our code into SQL, just like we would expect. Great. But here's the problem. Let's say you want to reuse this method in a second place. So you need a sort of reusable method so that if you change the code, you only want to have to change this code in one place. So a naive way to do that might look like this. Okay, so uh, zip on through that, fast forward, and I've got an apply main filter. So this would be the method that I want to be able to reuse, and I am passing in the main filter DTO and the user, and it returning back a, a bool. So to use this, then I would say apply main filter on the filter and on you. Say and the name starts with. So you would expect this to return the exact same SQL, right? But if I run it, you'll see that it's only taking the name and it's excluding everything that happened in this method. So there is a trick to fixing this, and the trick is that we need to return something that any framework can parse and return and, and parse into an abstract syntax tree, which is what linked does under the covers. It's one of the things that makes C Sharp and uh, Entity Framework and Link so amazing is that it has this expression tree features, this expression trees feature where it'll parse code back into, in Entity Framework's case, SQL. So let's try to solve this correctly. And so we want to return an expression of func of bool and user, no, uh, user, and it returns a bool. Okay, so now what we're returning is an expression of func, and an expression of func is explicitly parsable. If we had just returned a func of user, which says, given a user, I'll return a bool, that will not work. It specifically needs to be an expression of func, and the two are so similar, except if you toss this extra expression parameter in here, it tells it that it is not just a thing that can be executed, but a thing that can be turned into an abstract syntax tree and parsed at runtime. So that is some cool stuff, and we're going to use it by saying uh, users query okay and if I run that oh yeah I do need to pass in the filter and if I run that 
All right, there we go. The oh, that's the problem. There we go, and that double wear will probably work. Hey, there we go. Okay. Name is uh, starts with, and there we go down over there at the end. We've got the creation time. By the way, one of the things I love about Link is that if I were to throw, toss in an end date here, then it's going to add that query, but it's not going to add it until it explicitly needs it. So now we're going to see that the start date and the end date are both, yep, the start date and the end date are both being used in the query. Cool. Now, there's one more way of writing this that I think is kind of nice. So this was, uh, I don't remember if I promised up front, but I was going to give three separate solutions to this problem. So, so this is solution number one, where we're returning an expression of func. Now, another way you could do it is if you like chaining, you could write an extension method. So if I were to do an extension method kind of option, it would look like this. All right, here we go. We've got an extension method called append main filter query, which will uh, run off of an iQueryable and return an iQueryable. So our syntax is going to change just ever so slightly. Instead of this, we will do dot where, and then we can do dot append main filter query and pass in the filter. Run that and excellent. That still worked just like we would expect it to. So that's another option if you like the way that looks and reads. I think that's kind of nice. I kind of prefer the first option. It seems a little more, I don't know, extension methods are nice, but sometimes they feel a little bit magical. So speaking of magical, if you've got advanced needs and you got to do much more complicated stuff, that is where Link Kit comes in. A coworker showed me this uh, recently and I've I love it. It's really cool the way you can build up queries across methods over time and and uh, in particular we can do things like or because in this case it's really hard to say I want this or this but with link kit you can do that. So to do that I'm going to do one more one final solution to this problem here. If you've never seen link kit you're in for a surprise. Okay so Hey, okay, I don't have Predicate Builder added in, so to do that in LinkPad, I'm going to go into the NuGet Package Manager and ask for link. All right, good stuff. We've added in link kit. I ought to be able to now, yep, I can add the namespace for link kit new. Okay, there is our method. It's a get predicate method, and so it starts creating a predicate builder, which is like a query that we can build up over time. The dot start method is the thing that you use to sort of uh, initialize it, and then you can dot and and dot or onto it to expand it and grow it over time. So we're going to return that expression, uh, that expression starter, and so we'll call get. And now we can dot and or dot or. So if we were to do what we did just before uh, and, and didn't actually make any changes, or if we wanted to show something a little bit fancy, and the reason why we're including in something, and this would be very hard, maybe impossible to get without something like LinkedIn, then you can dot or where the name starts with go. We can just extend it something like that that and now we want to return it and to do that return await users dot okay and let's see if that works running and 
creation time and creation time is less than the regular. Oh, there's our or. Fantastic. And then there's that. All right. So that is another, that is our third way of uh, compiling, uh, reusing, uh, reusing an expression as part of an SQL query in any framework across multiple methods. Or maybe you just want to extract it to give it a nice meaningful name. Hope that you have learned something and I hope you'll join me again next week. Please like and subscribe if this was useful.